If you're using a fusible stabilizer like me today or fusible fleece, go ahead and center the stabilizer inside that window and then fuse it with an iron. You're going to do that on both straps. If you don't have fusible stabilizers, you can use sewing stabilizers instead as well. In that case, you can just keep those two stabilizers aside for later and I will tell you when to add them later on. If you're using directional print, make sure both of your fabric prints runs at the same direction. So you're going to place them right sides together, line them up, then you can just clip it around the bottom edge. You don't have to do it all around because we're not going to stitch the entire strap at the moment. Okay, take a ruler and mark roughly about five centimeter from the edge. This doesn't have to be accurate, this is just a guideline because we're going to stitch from that marking we're going to sew the curve and then we're going to finish at the other marking so if you do it a little bit lower or a little bit higher it's not it's not that big of a deal um, don't do it too high because it's going to be harder for you to turn the strap right side out Okay, I've stitched my strap just around that bottom curved edge, as you can see. Now I'm going to trim the fabric just around that curve. You don't have to be very precise. You want to leave about five millimeters seam allowance. Before we turn our straps right side out, you want to apply double-sided tape on the edges. Um, alternatively, Following those lines that you drawn at the beginning, you're going to fold the straps towards the wrong side of the fabric, just like that. Uh, because I'm using faux leather today, I don't want to really press it, I'm going to use double-sided tape. Okay, now that we're ready, we can turn the strap right side out. Okay, just like that. If you're using sewing stabilizer, make sure you insert that stabilizer inside your straps now. Otherwise, you're going to peel the plastic cover and now we're going to fold those edges around the stabilizer on both sides and then we're going to repeat that on this side we're going to fold those long edges uh, following those lines that we've drawn previously towards the center Once you have those edges folded, you, you can apply some double-sided tape in the center if you want. Otherwise, bring both of the strap pieces wrong sides together um, and closing all those seam allowance. And then you're going to place it on top of each other. Make sure that those two edges are the same way. You can clip that in place, just like that. So you've got your strap nice and ready. And then when you're ready, you're going to top stitch first um, about two millimeters from the edge all around the strap. Don't worry about that short row edge. And then we're going to top stitch again about five millimeters from the first stitch. So uh, it's going to be about seven millimeters from the edge, but five millimeters from the first stitching line. Again, inside around the curve. Repeat that on both straps. Now we're going to take the top row edge and we're going to cut it at a slight angle. So take a ruler and measure five millimeters on one side. And then from that, from that point, from that notch, you're going to draw a line towards the top corner. Okay. 
just like that. I hope you can see that. Now you can cut it along that line. And then we're going to do that on the other strap. However, make sure it's in the opposite direction. So if this is the strap I already completed and my angle goes from, from top to bottom like this, this strap needs to go from the bottom to the top. So as a so like a mirror like a mirror image. So you can either put it on top of each other and then draw copy the line if that's if you prefer to make sure you do it correctly. Um, otherwise again measure five millimeters on this side. And then draw a line going towards the top corner. There you go. And then I'm going to cut it along the line. Now take your ladder lock sliders and two pieces of webbing that is 10 centimeters long. We're going to prep our slider connectors. To make sure we fit our webbing strap correctly, we need to recognize the front and the back of the ladder lock sliders. They they look slightly different as you can see uh, this is the front and this is the back so on the front you can see there is a ribbed lower bar that is much higher than the top bar and on the back you've got the top edge of the tongue ribbed so pay attention to that otherwise once your leather lock sliders are installed you won't be able to adjust them properly okay so now that we understand the difference we can take one of the webbing straps and your slider and wrap it around the top bar. So this is our front. So you're going to wrap it underneath and around that top bar, just like that. So when I flip it to the back, you can see that the top bar is visible, but from the front, the top bar is hidden under the webbing strap. So now we can fold the top edge of our webbing strap by about one and a half centimeters. You can clip that in place for now. And then we're going to bring the lower edge of our webbing towards the top edge. You want them to meet, just like that. And then we can clip that in place as well. So your strap with your slider looks something like this now. I prefer to add double-sided tape behind uh, to hold it because when I use clips it tends to shift a little bit and it's less secure. Then you can add another small piece of double-sided tape just at the back. Don't go too low because we're going to stitch a little box uh, in a second so you don't want your double-sided tape visible. Now you're going to take your um, sliders with connectors and we're going to place them on top of the strap on the right side so this, the, the side that is going to be visible uh, when the backpack is worn. So you want to line up that webbing at the edge of your strap just like that. So make sure you center it and then you're going to stitch a box around, then you can stitch uh, crossing lines inside the box if you want for added security, or instead you can install a couple of rivets here. Once you have your handle basted, you're going to take your padded straps and place them facing down on top. So this is my right side, the side that is visible once the backpack is assembled. What you're going to do, you're going to take that angled raw edge of your strap and we're going to place it a parallel to that line. Just like that. What you want to make sure that when you place both of your straps, the strap uh, points outside of your backpack. So as I slide it a little bit so you can see, this is how it should look like when it's basted. 
uh, what you don't want to do you don't want to end up with straps going inward like this because it's going to be very uncomfortable to wear that's the correct way so if you want you can use double-sided tape to hold it in place otherwise just take it to the machine and then you can baste the strap in place the same way you've done for the handle you're going to take your strap connector and we're going to fold it in half along that long edge so you're going to fold it like this you can press it with your fingers and then you're going to take your webbing strap that is 50 centimeter long and we're going to insert it uh, against that fold edge so the short edge will be along that raw long edge of the triangle and then we're going to fold it like this and you're going to clip that in place and now using one centimeter seam allowance we're going to stitch along that long edge on both of your strap connectors I like to stitch another st stitching line just behind the first stitching line to make sure that my webbing strap is nice and secure. Uh, next you're going to turn the strap connectors right side out. Then you can take this to the machine and we're going to stitch along all sides on both of our connectors. Okay, after you top stitch the strap connectors, you can just trim that little excess fabric. Then take your strap connector and place that raw edge along the side edge. So you want to make sure your strap is facing up. So don't place it like this, that's wrong. You want the strap facing up. You're going to take that lower corner and you, we're going to place it at the three centimeter mark. And then you can clip that in place and repeat that on the other side. Here we go. Now we're going to baste the strap connectors about five millimeters from the edge. Making sure your webbing is not twisted, you're going to take the end and feed it from underneath the slider, just above that uh, lower bar, just like that. And then we're going to fold it and feed it inside that hole underneath the lower bar. And then you can just pull it through to adjust the length. When you have both of the shoulder straps ready, you're going to take the loose end of the webbing and fold it twice by about one or one and a half centimeter. So once and then the second time, just like that. You can clip that in place. Uh, now we're going to take this to the machine and we're going to stitch along that folded edge. Thank you for watching this tutorial. See you next time. Stay crafty, friends.